Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, who at the baptism of Jesus in the river Jordan proclaimed him your beloved Son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit, grant that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenant they have made and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior. And with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God in glory everlasting. Amen. May be seated. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. The word of the Lord. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. While Apollos was in Corinth, I'm sorry, our psalm today is Psalm 29. We will read it, it's in your uh, service bulletin. We will read it whole verse by whole verse responsibly in the last verse altogether. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory to his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes covenants hit by the land, and not hurt him with the young wild ox. The voice of the Lord splits the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. 
The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees ride and strips the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying, glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people a blessing of peace. Our reading today is from the Acts of the Apostles. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. And he said, Into what then were you baptized? They answered, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about 12 of them. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. John the Baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. A voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Good morning. So if you don't know this about me, I come from a very Polish family, a very, very Polish family. My grandparents on my mother's side both came over from Poland when they were in their early teens. And throughout the course of their life, their Polish identity was a major part of who they were. They spoke Polish, Polish fluently in the home as well as English. My grandmother would often make pierogies and pigs in a blanket. Um, Every Christmas Eve, we celebrated Wigilia with traditional Polish mushroom soup. Often, my grandfather would listen to, which I remember, the polka music, which I've never been a fan of, but very Polish polka music, which is all to say being Polish was a big deal. It was part of who we were. So you can imagine our shock and surprise when several years ago, my father, while delving into our genealogy and our history, discovered that we're not Polish. We are culturally Polish, my grandparents came from Poland, but genetically, apparently we are more closely related to Finland. I know nothing about Finland other than the, that it exists out there. Nothing about the culture. But this is all along a roundabout way of saying that our identities and how we identify ourselves and who we are, understand ourselves to be is important. It's a key part of who we are. And those identities can shift throughout the course of our lives and change. And today in our gospel reading, we get a little glimpse of Jesus's identity as we hear about his baptism and who Jesus is. In our gospel reading this morning, Jesus goes out and meets John the Baptist, who's out in the wilderness as this kind of wild um, preacher figure in the wilderness. And he baptizes Jesus in the River Jordan. And the heavens split open, and the Holy Spirit descends upon him like a dove, and he hears this voice, You are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. If you have ever been out to the Middle East, if you've ever had the opportunity to see the River Jordan, there's a couple things that you're going to notice about it. First, the River Jordan, if you haven't seen it before, Quite frankly, it's not that impressive. It's not a very big river. It's almost like a very large stream or a kind of drainage. It's kind of anticlimactic. And when you look at the water in there, you realize it is not clean, clear, perfect distilled water, right? It's very muddy and kind of icky. You can't really see anything more than an inch or two beneath the surface. And if you cast your mind back to the first century, people used that flowing water for everyday life. People would have been cleaning their laundry in there, or washing their dishes, or in an era without indoor plumbing, would have been using the water. And yet that's the water that Jesus and, and all of the people going out to John the Baptist, that's the water that Jesus, that God incarnate, immerses God's self into. God descends down from the highest heavens into the mess and muckiness and the dirtiness or the ugliness of humanity. God doesn't keep distant from it, but engages and submerges and surrounded God's self with it, and then comes back up and out. And as Christ lifts and comes up out of the waters. Christ also lifts us up out of the muckiness of the world and lifts us up towards the heavens. Perhaps there's something in this gospel lesson for us this morning. When we, if we find ourselves questioning our identity or wondering who am I? Or what are the identities that I hold in my life? be it that of a parent or a spouse or an employer or a student or anything else. These are all part of our makeup and how we view ourselves. But perhaps, like Jesus, there's another identity that's even more important that all the other ones sit under this umbrella. Oh. Because we, because you, are also beloved. 
Each one of us here is created as a beloved child of God. Whatever the other identities that we hold are, and they might be many, and they might be important to us, but there is one identity that undergirds it all, that supports it all, that gives it all shape and form. The identity of beloved. Perhaps that's something that we can take away from this. You too are God's beloved. And with you, God is love for you. Amen. Together, let us stand and proclaim the words of our faith as found in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. We have spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God, for all the people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are For this community, the nation, and the world, and especially Joe Biden, President, Eric Holcomb, Governor, and Chris Jensen, our Mayor. For the just and proper use of your creation. Um, for all who are in danger, sour, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Jennifer, our bishop, Father T.J., our rector, and in our diocesan cycle of prayer, Trinity Bloomington, the Reverend Matthew Seaton, the Venerable Connie Poplar, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in God's church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, Grant Cook, Paige Sexton, Heather Duchess, Becky Seiler, Emily Baker, Ken Bush, Mike Byers, Lydia Wente, Mark Greiner, Pat Graham, Gabriella Bright, Kristen Decima, Angela Nichols, and Jamie Purvis. 
Hear us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life, and we will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise We pray for all who have died that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Almighty God, by your Holy Spirit, you have made us one with your saints in heaven and on earth. Grant that in our earthly pilgrimage, we may always be supported by this fellowship of love and prayer, and know ourselves to be surrounded by their witness to your power and mercy. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ, in whom all our intercessions are acceptable through the Spirit, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Amen. Could you could you include the doxology at the operatory? Praise that for uh, Good morning, St. Michael's. Please be seated for a moment for a couple of announcements before we continue with our service. First, just a reminder that this upcoming Wednesday, we have our monthly vestry meeting at seven o'clock downstairs. Um, all vestry meetings, as we say most months, all vestry meetings are open to every member of the congregation. We also um, Zoom it, so if you want to um, attend virtually, you can. And the minutes from the previous meeting are posted in the narthex as well. So um, if you'd like to join, you're more than welcome. Epiphany just happened. Um, yesterday was the feast day of the Epiphany. And as part of Epiphany, one of the traditions of the church is house blessings, where we go and we bless the homes that we live in. And one of the traditions of that is what is sometimes called holy graffiti. If you look in the back of the church as you exit on your right hand side, you'll see these little bags and inside each one is a little blessing for your home and a piece of chalk. So we invite you to take one with you and then when you get to your home to write up with the chalk um, on the lentil or the doorway of your home, the blessing for your house is a way of reminding yourself whenever you enter it that this home has been blessed by Christ. Happy Epiphany to everybody. And finally, just to let everybody know that our annual meeting is going to be coming up. Of course, you all know that our annual meeting is um, our gathering that we do as a church once a year to do the business of the church, where we elect vestry members, delegates for convention, um, budgets, all that, that kind of stuff. Uh, that will be on the 28th, the last Sunday of this month, we will have our annual meeting. I believe those are the only announcements. Oh, nope, we have one more announcement. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. The night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. The last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory of yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power and the glory forever and ever. Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Behold the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, O oh Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses for our star Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. May Christ, the Son of God, be manifest in you, that your lives may be a light to the world. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia.